Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Dave Riccio here along with Matt Allen, and we are helping you with your car every Saturday from 11 to noon. At Bumper to Bumper Radio, we're helping you, the motoring public, have a better overall car experience. If you've got car questions, we've got your answers, so we encourage you to give us a call at 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTAR. And you can text us at 411923. And today on the roadmap, we are going to address some emails from bumper to bumperradiocom we're going to have open phones, and we've got the text at 411923. And, you know, Matt, with fuel prices down, I think there's people at the pump that can, you know what, with fuel prices up, I was buying the cheap fuel, but now with fuel prices down, I want to take a little nicer care of my car. I kind of feel like I've been neglecting it. Let me put some premium fuel in there, that 91 octane, because, you know what, it's a whole lot cheaper than it used to be. Well, yeah, it is, and, and the thing is, if your car requires 91 octane, it's gonna it's gonna be in the owner's manual first of all, but it's also gonna typically you're gonna find a sticker on your on your fuel door. Uh, so if you haven't been using the premium fuel and your car needs it, you need to get back to it absolutely. But but even though the fuel prices have come down, if you start using premium fuel in a car that does not require, you're just wasting less money now. <laughs> uh, so it, it is absolutely not not necessary. And I've been getting this question at, at, at the shop a lot too. People saying, "You know, should I, should I start using premium? The price are down." No. no, no. If your car is is just regular plain Jane unleaded fuel, that's what you need. Eighty nine octane. Yeah, keep keep your uh, keep your money. Put in the right gas. And and the reason is, I mean, people. The, it used to be that you know we had super unleaded fuel. We were laughing about that earlier, Dave. Oh yeah, and and, and leaded and unleaded and super ultra premium and all these different blends and such. And I think back in you know the '80s when they started coming out with these detergent fuels, you could only get the detergents and the cleaners in the premium fuel. So the that, super unleaded. Yeah, super duper. So so people would want to buy those, and and it and it had the cleaners in it. And if that was the case today, maybe I would consider maybe using the uh, premium fuel. But all the fuel levels have the additives. And there's a website that you can look at. It's called Top Tier Fuel, or the website's toptierfuel.org, and it will tell you a little bit more about that stuff. But now, all like I said, all the fuels have the have the additives and cleaners in it. So there's no benefit to, to going up, and it could actually be worse for the car. You could have a car that runs very efficient and put premium fuel in it. Well, that fuel burns a little bit differently, and the engine is not designed for it, and you could actually make the performance go backwards so the the bigger the number isn't the number of goodness you yeah. know in the fuel it's just the rate at which the fuel burns so if you got a higher compression high performance engine we're going to need fuel to burn a little slower yeah so we don't get pre-ignition or, or detonation but if you've got a car that is just you know your regular everyday grocery getter or nothing fancy you don't need the the big number octane yeah, and now I wasn't thinking about this till you brought that up now, but people will say, well, gosh, if I do, my car doesn't require premium, but it pings. If I don't use the premium, if I go back to what it calls for, it, 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 it rattles and pings, put premium in it, that goes away. Well, what you've done now is you're just masking the problem, which is carbon buildup in the engine. So we'll, we'll expand into that a little bit. Carbon buildup is is a problem where I mean it's just picture your fireplace. This this is a gross example, <laughs> but what happens when you when you burn? You're going to have smoke, soot, carbon that's going out the chimney. Well, those chimneys start to plug up. They restrict, and the same thing will happen in your even in your carbureted car. It, it's a little bit different, but I remember the old timers when I started working that that uh, you know we were still working. You know, I started in the 80s or so working on cars. So to see a car in the 60s, n no big deal. That was a newer, considered a newer car then. Well, the, the old guys would put water. They'd inject water into the cylinders. I'd see them pouring water down the carpet or sucking it through a vacuum. Like, what what the you, heck are you doing? What's this all about? Well, that water was cleaning the carbon from the engine. And, and it wasn't necessarily on the valves like it gets today. It, it was in the combustion chambers. So we'll move up to fuel injection. And even a carbureted or I'm going to call normal fuel injected car, not a direct injection. We're going to get to that, and that's where the carbon issues are. Uh, but a fuel injected car 
or a carbureted car in the airstream, that air that's getting sucked into the engine, going past the valves and into the combustion chamber, that air also has the fuel mixture in it. So that fuel acts as also a detergent. It's washing. It keeps that airstream nice and clean, keeps the back of the valve clean, although you do get some carbon buildup on the back of the valve. And then you would get the carbon buildup more inside the combustion chamber or in the cylinder. And we could, again, we could clean that with just doing a fuel injector cleaning service. And, and if you've been to my shop before and I've talked to you about fuel injector cleaning or any of my guys, and even here on the radio, I always say, yeah, we're, we're, it's kind of not, it's a fuel injector cleaning service, but we're really not trying to clean the injectors. The fuel injector is the delivery method for the cleaner, which then will go in. Of course, the injector will get cleaned a little bit. And that injector is spraying right onto the valve, and that's washing off anything that's on the valve, and then it's going into the cylinder and burning and removing carbon from the cylinders. Well, the big problem we're seeing now at my shop is Hyundais and Kias. This new Ford EcoBoost is a big one. Audis, Volkswagens, Mercedes, they have what's called direct fuel injection. So like the, uh, unlike the carbureted car or your normal fuel-injected car, where the fuel stream is in the air in, in the airstream also, now they're directly injecting the, the fuel right into the cylinder. So it's at a super high pressure, like 1,500 pounds of pressure. Well, the problem is we've taken that fuel out of the airstream that used to keep everything clean. The back of the valves and the intake. and Yeah, and, and not only on a normal car or a carbureted car you would have the fuel in the airstream, but you also have the crankcase ventilation, which is the PCV valve or... You know, the manufacturers, for emissions reasons and the government, they don't want anything escaping out of that engine. Little micro droplets of oil and anything that could, don't want that going out the tailpipe. It's all got to get ingested back into the engine and reburned. So with the absence of that fuel in the airstream, what do we have left? We have micro droplets of oil. We've got some exhaust gas recirculation that's by design. And uh, so we start to see these cars, and even in 15 or 20,000 miles sometimes, we go down in the cylinder with a bore scope, and you can see these valves are just, I just call them buggers. They're just, <laughs> I mean, it is restricted. So you picture a, a very at small. At your chimney at your house after yeah. you've been burning wood all winter long. Yeah, you picture like a maybe a 15-millimeter opening for the valve, and you start to close up 30% of that. So now you're, you've reduced that down to 10 millimeters. So these cars come in with carbon, with, with misfire problems. Sometimes they check engine light on is on, and sometimes the complaint is just, it just it doesn't run right, it lacks power. It'd it, be like breathing through a coffee straw. Yeah, your you car, know, basically, look at it. your car has asthma. It can't <laughs> breathe. So some ways to prevent this, we, you need, it goes back to uh, the importance of changing the oil. Again, I said there's, there's oil droplets and crankcase ventilation going through the airstream, well, if you've got dirty oil and you're neglecting your oil change, and by the way, when I say neglect, the manufacturers will say 10,000, 12,000 miles on an oil change. That's neglect to me because that people that are following that advice, we're seeing this problem. 5,000 mile oil change no matter what. Well, why are, they, why are the manufacturers doing that? Why don't they know about these carbon problems? Because I don't hear a lot of talk about it and I don't, you know, this is something that you're seeing, but... Why is the manufacturer not making a big deal about this? Well, they, they, I've heard of possibly some class action lawsuits, but manufacturers know about it now. But when they do their 500,000 mile torture test or you know the different things that they do to, to prove the longevity of this engine, that's not 500,000 miles of driving around town. Although they do do that, you know, GM and all the manufacturers, you'll see these uh, cars drive around Phoenix certain times of year with bras and things, different panels covered up and funky paint schemes on them with a, usually a manufacturer tag. Well, they're doing their, their testing here. But but these problems aren't showing up. It, it takes around town driving and your short trips and your cold starts and, and, and multiple starts per day. And uh, and you get this buildup. So what we do is, is uh, you can do a fuel injector cleaning service, but again, that's really not going to do anything on a gasoline direct injection engine because the fuel is going right into the cylinder. That it's, moving, it's going past all the ports and passages that it's not cleaning. Yeah, there's nothing there. So you still have that airstream full of, of soot and oils and stuff, and that just bakes onto the valve, 
and, and it stays there, and you've got to clean it. So we've come up with some help from a BG chemical company, a, a way to clean those and, and, uh, and, and a method to clean that off. And I tell you, we're having a lot of success. A lot of uh, customers are very happy with the performance, but you can prevent it. If you want to talk to us about us, give us a call, 602-277-KTAR, 602-277-5827. We'll be right back. 